Hello there and welcome to Heart Explained Therapy and it's going to be another one of my waffling theories and I just think this is just feels true. This feels so much truer than the realities that I see out there. And I'm going to express this again and again until people hopefully understand it and, and consciously grasp what I'm saying. And it starts off with a very uncomfortable voyage for you to take on. And I need you just to believe it for 10 minutes or two weeks or a short amount of time. Just to show you what I'm talking about. Not to say that it's true. I don't believe any uh, intellectual mind could find the truth. I think it's beyond us. But I think this point is valid more now than ever. And... Um, it basically goes against a lot of spirituality that comes to the conclusion of a lot of intellectual people that believe that unconditional love is flowing through this universe as some sort of universal law or some sort of divine matter that is important to creation and not just important to creation but that is a god-like feature and it's bliss love nirvana it's the feeling of heaven on earth now i want to pretend that's not real for a second take that belief away and i think that what happens initially is you take away meaning and purpose and this is devastating for uh, for for mankind or the mankind's mind to conceive that this is a all for nothing. It's all just an evolutionary process. Now, this doesn't have to do away with any of your beliefs, other than just allow you to see a deeper truth of reality, which is. You definitely have a state of conscious awareness that can be broken down from unconscious, instinctive, reactive behaviour to a point where you become more conscious and even in that consciousness you can still act unconsciously. But the more you, know, you learn and, and introspect and, and understand different types of philosophy and ideas and you put it all together and you see what fits, you realise that what you're combining is a bunch of ideas with a feeling that fits right with your psychological traits. Whether you've be, you know, whether you've broke through all the fears or not, you see that you sit with something that is comfortable for you and you alone. Now, I think that for some people, the love and the bliss, the state, the feeling is enough to not open any more doors to pain and more fears. They believe that this feeling in their life and their emotional needs being met, which this feeling provides for them, is enough to put the anchor down and stay in that reality forever. And I think that this is a bad conscious state to be in because I think it's the same as an egoic state. It's a uh, it's almost like the egoic mind and the spiritual mind are both exactly the same. They create illusions for you to feel completely safe. And um, this is what we are programmed to feel. And I want to throw in my theory, my philosophy, which is that this God that we call him, let's just pretend there is a a visual higher state of being God. Now if you look at what this God does, if he, if he has created me and you as a human evolutionary biological mechanism, um, or just some beautiful artwork, what he has done, he's, he's given us the power to create evil, or to create unconditional love or to create this um, state of breaking down consciousness to become more consciously aware of different states existing. Now, when the spiritual guru says that that's un un unconditional love and it 
that's really the human's journey that we've just forgotten about it and we all have to just take psychedelics and get this uh, collective oneness that produces utopia on planet earth then you have to understand that this god didn't create that story he didn't create that he gave humanity the choice of two options the polarized choice of evil or goodness he gave us the power to choose what we decide to do now you can say that we've become very unconscious of the spiritual side and only probably two percent of the population really get this feeling of bliss which is possibly like a psychedelic experience but I would argue that you turn around and translate in that place that the because you feel this um, emergent state of property which is love and it just feels like oneness and it feels like you are related to everybody and you seem to be able to get into these feelings through meditation where you just harness the will of God remember you're harnessing the will of God who allowed you to choose how you feel it allowed you to choose different alternative realities God doesn't seem to really care which one you choose it doesn't seem to affect the greater being it doesn't seem to matter he can view himself in the evil and the goodness of what he's created so this is where I go with my mind to see that when you put your anchor down in just let's say a religion then it's because that religion does something for you now when you put this down into any belief system one of love or one of purpose and meaning it's because it does something for you which is I'm guessing keeps you safe keeps you comfortable keeps you sane keeps you programmed into uh, not a reality where you're completely comfortable with all of your environments and, and interactions it's probably very uncomfortable but in your own state of being you will feel safe having this um, just having this knowledge this uh, I know the game and I'm attempting to play the game you know I wouldn't say that you would uh, intellectual beings would say that they totally know that something is completely true I think anybody can openly admit that there is millions of different belief systems actually being activated at exactly the same time but intellectual people seem to talk in a way where there is no other reality and I think there is another reality I think there's another reality that is formed in our imagination and this is where we get to a crucial point now if you followed up to now you've got to understand that the point of this is in this creative state of imagination that your mind can exist in that you can go in regardless of fears regardless of emotions regardless of your beliefs regardless of God regardless of love or evil in the realms of this imagination is certainly a powerful uh, let's just call it a tool a tool that seems to tr trigger ideas and as we've seen through the uh, past an idea is formed uh, a lot of people get a hold of it they stamp their own truths to it or it inspires other truths in it and it gets evolved into a certain type of language or a certain type of study or a certain type of belief system a certain type of culture and then as we've also known for the course of history and the modern culture that we're in this culture then becomes us it becomes our um, sort of dogma and our uh, bible that we follow and it influences us 
massively into the ideas of the future, which is at the moment being very scientifically based. It lacks any magical religion myths of the past, and you know we've done away with the the sort of mathematics of astrology and stuff that we used to do in the old cultures. The the black voodoo witch sort of magic has faded away. And we're turning into a very processed or what we would class as organised uh, sort of mechanical robotic um, person that can use and believe that we're using artificial intelligence to help us. Now we're getting lost so far uh, in what we believe to be true that we've forgotten exactly the way that the world works. And this is the way the world works for me. A human being 200 years ago said something that was completely true and he was hailed genius at that time. And 100 years later that person, what, um, another person came along and established new ideas inspired by that person. And this happens every 20 to 30 years when the new people come along and take an idea. Now what I'm saying is that if we understood that, if we looked at that as, as a philosophy in its own right and say, wait there, that's what, what people seem to do. We don't have to spend 50 years talking about whether certain ideologies of mental health is true or false. We can just label it as there is no absolute truth in the basic laws that we've got and we need to evaluate all new ideas and new opinions. What we would do then is we would take off the sort of cap of ability, the, the knowledge that we have that can inspire and progress at a quicker rate. I mean, we, we're currently actually suffocating ourselves. We don't take bright children and find out what they're really good at, what their minds are really good at. And we don't harness that skill, that ability. What we do is, is we cover, what we put a blanket cover of a basic education down and say, we will mark and grade you based on this and we will give you a stigma for the rest of your life if you don't achieve what we believe is the blanket education. That was created a hundred years ago, which is technically so flawed in today's modern times it's we're nowhere near up to date with the education what we should be having and what we need for the future that's just one element of it another element is again the academic way that we look at um, exams and processes like uh, degrees i mean we ask for you to reference stuff and copy stuff all the time and the whole thing is just plagiarism, just pure plagiarism and they're, they're checking if you know how to write and copy down information so you can copy and write down information when you go out in the world on your own. And I'm saying God's greatest gift, if he does exist, was our ability to not plagiarise but to create brand new ideas. To imagine if you could say to a 15 or 16 year old, can you come up with a better idea than um, you know, a mental health sort of therapy that we have today. If you could put a blanket question over to all 15, 16 year olds to be creative, make them understand human sort of behavioural tendencies at an early age, and focus all their minds and powers for one hour per day on this just simple idea of how we can get a better therapeutic or tool for the 21st century. Somewhere out there, there will be a genius mind that will say something that seems so silly and daft, but with a great teacher, a great person listening and really listening, another art that we don't really know how to do it. Listening to this child, respecting this child for their idea that's just come from the pure dreamlike imagination. 
we would create a future that we would want to live in and it would be that place that we can only write now down as a sort of fairy tale land, a, a place of dreams where dreams exist and it's separate to reality that we see. The real truth is if you have settled for a philosophy or a religion or a spirituality, if you have settled your mind on anything, then that is just so fragile and so dangerous for your conscious, uh, for your conscious state of well-being, because you know that time proves nothing lasts forever, as in philosophies and theories don't really last forever, do they? They are concepts that are forever changing with new words that we create. Now, if we can live in that state, and you could say, okay, but you live in this philosophy that you believe in. You see, my philosophy incorporates everybody else's philosophy. It incorporates the fact that I could be wrong. It incorporates the fact that God may exist and he may not be just um, focused on unconditional love for hum humanity to exist in utopia. It could be that um, he doesn't matter, he doesn't care for him either way. The evolution of mankind might not matter for consciousness. Consciousness may exist far greater in plants and nature than it ever does with us. And we just don't have that perspective and we just can't see that reality. And I just think that that mind is so open-minded and so sort of um, dreamlike in its nature, in, in awake reality, it is so dreamlike in nature that you can be so far, you know, you can see so much more not only can you uh, understand all of the internal and external sort of relationships that are taking place, these subjective and objective um, manoeuvres that uh, flow um, in all sorts of different vibrations, but you can also have the ability to, to roll with the punches, to adapt to circumstances, to to see further ahead in the future, almost in a way that the future has already existed and you're just living in the process of time which is completely made up and this borderline's absolute craziness but if you took your mind there for a minute, if you was able to let go of spirituality and the stuff that protects you, the, the real stuff that protects you from your fears, you will see that you just tap into this mindset of um, it, it basically opens your eyes to a place beyond the, the spiritual feeling of unconditional love that you get so lost in and, and why wouldn't you get lost in that? It is a drug-like feeling but I know that the next emergent state of that is understanding why that was created. It was created to look after you just like the ego creates illusions all the time to look after you. And it's not wrong for this God to decide to give you the choice of what you want to believe in. In fact, it's, it's exactly what a perfect God would do. A God wouldn't tell you any rules to live by. It would uh, lead by example of this, you know, certain state, this certain, you know, belief that when you truly believe in something, it's not actually believing anymore, is it? It's just you know. You don't believe it's raining when you are getting soaking wet. You know that it's raining. Think of that in terms of this mindset that you can get, this belief that the, the, all of the mathematics and the science and the arguments that you get involved in every day, the entanglement of life externally and internally are actually just a uh, perfectly flowing system for you to transcend 
all of that to a higher state of consciousness which goes above the mind and goes above the state of consciousness to some extent because you can view for the first time that um, consciousness isn't this um, limited uh, sort of tool as in like it isn't everlasting it has one uh, singular motive which doesn't hold you in the spectrum of consciousness as an important part of it. Now, to me, this is the bit that makes people uncomfortable. And it doesn't have to be. Why would your experience of life change based on any of those circumstances, any of those concepts that I've just said? It wouldn't change. It would actually be a feeling which you understand through the broken down egoic mind and the broken down spiritual mind that this place is re it basically reveals itself to be redundant of feelings and the feelings only come back when you go into either the spiritual consciousness or the egoic consciousness both driven for its own personal gain to feel completely alive in reality when the truth is that reality is no more existence than the belief that it's going to rain as you're getting completely so